Oh, testing one, two, one, two. Gentlemen, give me a tone, please. Testing one, two, three. Love University is about to be in session. Here we are. And Andy? What What's up, my man? All right. What's up? Hey, too loud. <laughs> no, you're good. Huh? This is your first time doing a podcast? No. Yeah, well, this is the first time in Love University. That's of for course, sure, Of right? course, of course, of <laughs> course. We, 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 we do everything a little bit higher level, right? Gotcha, yeah, gotcha. A little more energy. <laughs> Definitely. So today we, we're back, uh, another episode of Love University, where, yes. you know, we aim three things. Our message is love yourself, love yes. others, and a higher power. Exactly. And that's what uh, makes it worthwhile, right? Because you have to love yourself first. That gives you the energy, and then you can resonate outward to others and even a higher power. And today we have a special and very amazing guest today. This mm -hmm. is uh, Andy Audate. Andy. Now, Andy. Welcome, Andy, to the show. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. And this is an amazing story that we're about to hear. This young man uh, came from, uh, his parents actually from Haiti, uh, immigrants, uh, oh, wow. raised in kind of a you know, very modest environment. Mm -hmm. Started working at the age of 10 uh, at a barber shop, sweeping up hairs and cutting hair, I mm -hmm. think at age 10 or 11. Uh, ended up owning his own uh, set of stores, cell phone stores. Became a published author and speaker by age of 21. This gentleman what? is only 21 years of age. I know he, 20, 22. He looks about 40, but no, he's 21. <laughs> <laughs> Bro. He, he, uh, he's got the, the, the mature mentality. Yeah. But he's got an amazing story. And he tell us a little bit about your background. I mean, how did all this begin? How, how did all what begin? Where, where uh, are we going to start off? You become a speaker, an author, and you know, just in general, your Andy's life. And going to say, oh, it started when my mom and dad looked at each other. And, you know, <laughs> Way back love. in the day, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, well, I mean, the, 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 speaker, the speaker phase, well, everything started at the age of about 18. I knew that I wanted to work in sales because yeah. you can make more money. You can make commission. Mm -hmm. So I was looking for different opportunities. I, I was searching for a team to work at T-Mobile and uh, different cell phone stores because I know that was an opportunity to make some, some serious cash. And did somebody influence you to think like that? Or you honestly thought about, like, say, you know what? I want to be an entrepreneur from a young age. Uh did someone influence me to think about making more money? Yeah. 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 I was watching a lot of YouTube videos of different influencers that were focused in on, on sales and increasing income nice. and increasing wealth. So I wanted to, you know, get my feet wet. And I thought that cell phones was the first route to take. I, I thought that was the best route. I think, Dr. Avila, at this point in time, I mean, Andy's a millennial. And I think at the end of the day, is the new generation that's taking it upon themselves to learn, to be self-taught. And they're not waiting for life to teach them. They're going out there and grabbing it. And that's, that's Definitely. the beauty about it, right? Yeah, I think so. And this gentleman is, is very special because, I mean, he's written a book. It's called No More Average. I see. You it. know, and um, overcome an average life and live as the real you. So it's almost like he's an instrument. He's getting this knowledge. It's pretty amazing. Uh, of how to live the real life, right? And he, he talks about the real you versus the unfulfilled you. Mm -hmm. uh, Andy, what is the real you? Tell us about that. The, the real you is a version of yourself that you were meant to actually live. And the unfulfilled you is the version of yourself who is consumed by averageness. Well, that, and okay. that's looking at it in, in terms like mm -hmm. in this capitalist society that we live in, is living to your full potential. Because mm -hmm. in this society, is is about who has the best idea, who can move ahead, right? But mm -hmm. a lot of people are afraid to jump into that stage. Mm -hmm. How did you overcome that fear and just went into action? I understood, I understood the incompletion of my goals. The incompletion effects is when I don't actually achieve what I want to intrinsically achieve, who it actually affects. I met Dr. Avila at a sales conference that I hosted a week and a half ago. Mm -hmm. And... That was, that was a goal. It was scary. And mm -hmm. I know that I had to complete it, and this is why. There were going to be people I was going to meet who I did not know, and I was going to actually help them achieve their goals to push the world forward. Nice. So the incompletion of me putting on the sales conference literally halt, halts portion of the world moving forward. Hmm. It's, it's, so a, it's, a trick, it's a trickle effect. So you got to look at yourself, in essence, Dr. Avila, as an element, key element in life, and not look at yourself as just a bystander, right? Yeah, because he thinks of himself as a cause. Now, he says, I take responsibility for the happiness of others in some ways. You know, people I don't even know. Mm -hmm. You know, because by taking steps to, you know, as a speaker, an author, you know, basically a motivator, he's actually reaching out to people he doesn't even know. Mm -hmm. So if he decides to live a life of averageness, a lot of people are missing out. So that was really interesting because you're taking responsibility for other things that a lot of people don't talk about. Right, right. And I, and, I, and I believe that everyone has a responsibility. And once everyone fulfills that responsibility, the world is going to be such a different place. And why do you think a lot of people fear it? Because a lot of us, I would say, you know what, uh, I would say 
a lot of us tend to be entrapped in the nine to five mentality. Mm -hmm. There's nothing wrong with it. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. A lot of people like it, making a living. Mm -hmm. But that's all they're doing. They're getting supplies for their life and they're not living their lives to the full potential like you are. Mm -hmm. What was the difference that set you apart in your mind to say, you know what? I don't want to be part of the pack. I want to stand out. So you asked, you asked me two questions. The first question mm -hmm. was, why do I think that people fear it? Wow. And the second question was, why did I not want to be part of the pack, and, mm -hmm. which is not average? Mm -hmm. First and foremost, let me define what average is for the yes. listeners. Mm -hmm. Average is mimicking the efforts and ideas of other people or living vicariously through them. Mm -hmm. Now, the first, to, answer, to answer the first question, why do people fear moving forward in uh, removing averageness? Well, the thing is, it's a lonely road. We as human beings innately want to move together as a pack, mm -hmm. but with removing averageness because of the loneliness that that comes with it, it's it's too scary, man. And plus, mm -hmm. I don't know if I'm right. There's mm -hmm. doubt. There's yeah. fear. And where the fear takes place, mm -hmm. everyone has a different fear. Uh, it could be fear of success, fear of failure, fear of rejection, and all of this. Yeah. But you'll notice that fear is um, it all started with a person's youth. We are only consumed by like when we're born uh -huh. the only thing that we're scared of is sound and and death right. and, and falling the, the, those three things so fear of rejection that came from from years of rejection mm -hmm. saying that i don't want to do deal with that anymore mm -hmm. and then the second question can you repeat the second question because i forgot it the second question first was the influence like why do people fear it and the second one is i forgot because <laughs> oh, i got so no. caught up in, the, I, in I, listening I, to you I, 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 I i'm remember. thinking as you were saying i honestly like uh, as you were saying that i thought about like you know what what is my fear as you were saying it mm -hmm. and i think honestly in between us and the listeners my right. fear has been of success mm -hmm. because i know i have all the elements to do it but right i i felt like okay you know what if i jump on it mm -hmm. Who is it going to affect? Instead of thinking like you were thinking in a positive way, who is it going to affect in a positive way? I was uh -huh. thinking, who is it going to affect in, in another way? Yeah, I don't know. It's, it's weird, but right. so, I, like, I like the journey we're yeah, taking here with this your, conversation. To answer your, your second question, what made me move forward mm -hmm. away from the pack is because of what you just said. Yeah, I understood who it would, it would affect negatively if I don't move forward. Mm. So I had to, I had to take a responsibility of people I didn't know. Yeah. I was I was working with a coaching client yesterday, mm -hmm. and we we made up an example of working of him being a coach to help other people. Right, and I said, give me an example of your client that they would come up to you and they would need your help to do. What would they need to do? And he gave me the example of an individual who's scared to move forward with a triathlon. And I said, look at it like this. Your client moving forward with a triathlon is going to, that person is going to have to train on a regular basis, correct? Right. So now, look, look at it, check out this ripple effect. And this is obviously just a scenario. It's not always like this, but this is just a scenario. And this is how my brain takes it. Uh -huh. So your, 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 your client is training to do a triathlon. Their children, who is at the age of maybe one or two, is watching the mom or the father train hard. Mm hmm. <laughs> You are saving this child's life from obesity right now. You're being an influence on them. That 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 parent, mm -hmm. because they're working so hard for a triathlon, mm -hmm. they are saving their child from obesity because now the household is focused on training and health versus McDonald's and BK. Mm -hmm. Now, how did the parent get to start doing the triathlon? Well, he started working with the coach. So who had the responsibility there? Mm -hmm. The coach. Right. Yeah, so the it's like the ripple effect. I like that terminology because it's uh, you know cause and effect, right? So he, he's seeing himself as a cause for an effect to influence the world, mm -hmm. and basically it's going from selfishness to selflessness, right? Which is a powerful transition. A lot of people don't have that. You know, we're all thinking about our own problems and yeah. it's going to affect us. He's thinking about how can I affect others in a positive way. So he has pure empathy, right? He's you know he's putting mm -hmm. himself in other people's shoes in the future, not just in the moment. And, and actually thinking about what he can do to be that element to make it happen. Definitely. And he's putting the action and making the actual action happen, not just thinking about the thought. And yeah, the thought is there, but if you don't give that energy life and movement physically in this world, you're not doing it. And the other thing I was going to say is, you know, you talk about fear, but there's also uh, laziness. Okay, like People get very comfortable right, with their lower self, you know, the bad habits, you know, the bad thought process. And it becomes natural to them. And there's also a little bit of negative excitement, too, like, you know, a little bit of that where there's gossiping or whatever negativity they have, and they get used to it. Uh, but, Andy, what you're trying to tell people is to be your real self, right, your authentic self, or your true self, uh, and to live beyond averages, right, to be exceptional. Correct. Uh, so tell us more about that, because your book is really fascinating. You talk about 
different points, right, to how to be exceptional. Mm-hmm. Tell me a point that you think is strong. With overcoming averageness? Yes. Well, I want to I want to make a comment on what you first said. Yes. That that laziness, you know, procrastination. Look, mm-hmm. at the end of the day, you completing your goal is life or death. Not necessarily for you, mm-hmm. but could be for someone else. Mm-hmm. And if you go down the levels to, through the ripple mm-hmm. effect, you'll mm-hmm. see someone mm-hmm. could actually die from you not completing your goals. Wow. That's you know, deep, huh? That's amazing. You know, if, yeah. if if you don't if you don't do what you're actually meant to went to do. You know, if if someone is meant to have a, a radio station, mm-hmm. right? If you don't do this radio station, there are many guests and there are many listeners who will never hear your guest. Mm-hmm. But if you do the radio station that you innately always desired, like you mm-hmm. always wanted this radio station for some reason, mm-hmm. and you do it and you actually go through with it, mm-hmm. overcoming all opposition of fear, mm-hmm. rejection, fear of failure, doubt, all that stuff, and you bring on a guest that one of your listeners could listen to, mm-hmm. you might save that person's life. If that person was suicidal, right? Mm-hmm. There was a time that in July 2016, I was scared to speak. I, w- I was actually fearful to get on stage and, and speak. Was that one of the first mm-hmm. times when you were? That was my doing first it? time. Yeah, oh. I was, I was, God well, told one year ago. Mm-hmm. One year ago, Man. God told me. Yeah. God was laying. I was laying down on my bed, uh-huh. and and God said, "Look, I need you to speak in front of your church tomorrow." I was like, "Whoa!" Mm-hmm. I took some notes on my phone from the Bible, <laughs> yeah. and I was getting ready to speak. And then when it came down to speak, I was like, "Whoa!" I you were I'm, melting. I, mm-hmm. Yeah, I was scared, bro. Yeah. I was scared. Mm-hmm. However, four months later, I get the same feeling to speak. So the July, I didn't go to my church. I didn't uh-huh. speak. Four months later, I got the same feeling. I had to overcome that fear. Mm. I overcame that fear, and I had the notes written down from July. Yeah. And I got on stage, and I spoke at my church. And I put that video on YouTube. I recorded it because it's my first time speaking. Yeah. I put it on YouTube. Someone messaged me months later and said, I was about to kill myself. Mm. Damn. Okay. I didn't know that person. Wow. Right. He was like, I'm about to kill myself. But it's something that you said. And, I, mm. and because of that, I knew that I had to continue mm-hmm. to keep mm-hmm. going. So you pretty much is like knowing that you know that at the end of the day, like you said, your actions are going to affect somebody in a positive way, and you're always in that power lane, right. no, of positivity exactly. only. Correct. Think about mm-hmm. that, Gene. We're creating babies in the future, right? Yeah. Uh, you know, happy little married couples that listen to our show. Um, we're perhaps creating people that are suicidal, like you said, you know, to change their lives, right? Right. So this love university, right? It's all about love, right? Uh-huh. So by spreading the love, you know, who knows? We're, we're saving families, perhaps helping other people. And bringing guests like you on the show, right? They can also transform people. Correct. So that's a powerful way of thinking. But I mean, many times people are self-centered, right? It's all about us, right? You know, you know, make more money, this and that, you know. But you even talk about in your work, uh, what did you call a progressive cell company, right? Uh, my company, my company was Progression Wireless. Progression, right? So this is interesting, Nacini. He says that my biggest desire is to help my employees progress. In life psychologically so that was his main purpose for having this company and money just came naturally obviously yeah. right you were focused on the inside the positive and the functioning of the human being instead of just using a human being as a as a, a tool to sell something right so we're, 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 we are like we're skipping a step and the reason we're skipping a step is dr avila already read the book so he mm-hmm. he, he already he already knows but for, right. the, for the listeners mm-hmm. they're like they're gonna listen to this part and they're gonna say what what is he talking about mm-hmm. so why did i call my company progression uh-huh. i come from an impoverished area in rhode island Mm. Drugs, gang violence, stupid things, mm, right. stu- stupid things. So how do I combat it? Mm-hmm. Well, I noticed that I can't really preach to the qu- to the people because they're mm. always working. Yeah, they're always working. I had an opportunity to mm. open up a business. Mm. So if you're working for me, I therefore can tr- control your schedule. Right. I I know where you're gonna be, mm. and and I I know what information goes into your head. Mm. So I took that opportunity to obviously make money in the cell phone business, right. but also to help my peers by progressing. And advancing them, mm-hmm. and advancing them. So I would mm-hmm. in in the in the office, I would put on personal development, Les Brown, mm-hmm. uh, Grant Cardone, and so on and so forth. Put on personal development to help these people psychologically, and the, but to also show these individuals, mm-hmm. look. At the time, I was 19. Look, I can do this. 19 years old. 19. He's only yeah. 21 right now. You had just graduated <laughs> from high school. Yeah. I, Two years prior, yeah. Oh, so you oh, were so oh, ahead yeah, already. And he had a bit, uh, several different cell phone companies. Yeah. Man. Yeah, yeah. Crazy. You, you're really teaching mm-hmm. us, like mm-hmm. me, I'm in my 30s, mm-hmm. to honestly look at myself and say, man, 
What's been wrong? What have I been doing wrong? And tighten yes. up my screws. Honestly. Well, well, if we if we look at things like what's wrong, we look at things in a negative light. Uh, okay. Well, let's. What, what am I doing right? What would I do different? Uh-huh. Oh, that's a different perspective. Well, a, a positive yeah. reframe. A, instead of you. looking at yourself as like yes. the victim, right? Or like mm-hmm. giving yourself the negativity of, mm-hmm. you know what? Angry at me because I didn't do it and you live in remorse type mm-hmm. of thing. You right. know? So, so what have I not done to my best potential? Is the better question? Right? How can I do things better? You know, right. we didn't do we positive. we didn't do anything wrong, and, and this is just part of the story. So I I believe truthfully, like if if there's a certain way that you've lived so far, you didn't do anything wrong. But this is just part of the story. So mm-hmm. in the future, you can actually help others who are in the same predicament. That's cool. true. But and you did say that only twenty percent of your employees wanted progression, and eighty percent didn't. And you became so frustrated, you locked yourself in the bathroom and were crying. Tell us what happened. <laughs> oh man, <laughs> you, you probably forgot this. So. No, no, no. I, I, you know, this, you back. this was a um, this was a, a a situation in my life, man. That was a complete turnaround, and I I believe that night is when I decided to to really take my life to a whole new level. And, and the next step was California, because I, I that, that business and I was raised in Rhode Island, for mm-hmm. listeners and for Nachino to know. Sure, Nachino to know. Mm-hmm. So there was there was a time I was financially frustrated. In my business, when you have business money, it's different uh-huh. than personal money. Right. Business money, you need a surplus to be able to take care of your employees. And I remember there was a time where, because I was new to business and I grew so fast. Yeah. Now I think at the at the time I was maybe twenty years old. I grew so fast, and I have uh, these locations of all these employees. I did not understand that they were in businesses peaks and there's valleys. Right. So for a while, I'm going, I'm going up and up on the peak. Climaxing. Climaxing. Mm-hmm. You know, three thousand dollars a day, ninety thousand dollars a month in wow. revenue. Yeah. Like, like going up. It's crazy. Man. And then, boop, it goes down. Uh, the and, bubble burst. And I'm like, I'm like, whoa. So my finances at the time were still as if I was making that large sum of Ooh. money. Uh-huh. My expenses, I mean. Yep. So I remember my assistant looks at me and she she did like a finance report and she did she you know did all these graphics and these charts and she's showing me she says Andy based on the way that we're trending if we continue this way we're gonna be negative in the bank oh. you know so at the time I was positive yeah. so I was like oh shoot I need to make a complete change mm-hmm. so I start you know tearing down expenses and and help removing people's hours and so on and so forth then. There was a time that I came to the office by myself. I had a five-person office, and I was working there late at night by myself. And I'm sitting at one of the desks, and I'm looking at the bank account statement. I'm looking at you know how we're going. I'm saying like, why did I allow this to happen? Mm-hmm. You know, I was I, it, it was a it was a rough time. So in my office, across from the desk was a bathroom, and although I was by myself in the office, I just wanted to go to the bathroom in the dark. Mm-hmm. So I walk into the bathroom and I sit down. Right across from the toilet, to the, my left is the ceramic sink. To my right is a wall, and I just sit down with my knees to my chest, and I just, you know, I just start crying like a baby, I, like a baby, and I just lie down. I just lie down, and I, and, I'm, and I'm, my head is against the wall. My head, head is against the door. My feet is, a, is a rubbing against the the toilet, and I'm just like, you know, asking myself why, and then I, I just get up and I leave. Just just get up and I, and I leave the office. Forget everything, and I go to my car. And I prayed. I prayed so strongly and so faithfully. And I said, God, remove anything hindering my success. Remove anything hindering my success. I'm thinking that one of my employees is robbing from me. I don't know what's what's hurting my business right now. Mm-hmm. And obviously, it sales at one point as well. But there's something hurting my business. Weeks later, my, my, my right-hand man who started the business quits. Mm-hmm. Like a week and a half later. Mm-hmm. And I was like, whoa. Where did this come from? Where did this come from? Yeah, yeah. yeah he 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 quit, and then I I didn't realize. Wait, let me let me look at my business again. Why did I start this for progression? Mm-hmm. How many people are really focused on progression? Two out of ten, mm-hmm. on average, two out of mm-hmm. ten. Mm-hmm. So I have all these employees who don't care about progressing, mm-hmm. who who are literally here for a paycheck. Mm-hmm. And I'm like that. That wasn't my vision. Right. Mm-hmm. I need to rethink this whole entire thing. So you're in the wrong business, perhaps in some ways. In some ways, yeah, because mm-hmm. because of the fact of people really just came for a paycheck. Right. I thought people were going to come and uh-huh. say, look, this is dope. I get to, <laughs> I love this. I get to progress. Oh, yeah. But right. no, people didn't care. Yeah. It was like, dude, I'm just here for my $10 an hour. So, so right. you pretty much realize that mm-hmm. you cannot drill people into changing. It yes. has to come from them? Yeah, that's that's his message, <laughs> message right? In the book. <laughs> that's the message. Yeah. One, one, of my, one of my employees, I, I walk up to a store, Joe, and uh, Joe looks at me and he says, he sees the frustration in, my, in, in me, like, why... 
what what's going on and he was part of the individual he's part of the 20 percent that was you know willing to move Positive, forward uh-huh. and he said andy you know you can't change someone you can only help someone change themselves i yeah. said i said whoa that hit you i said whoa <laughs> That makes sense. Mm-hmm. No, no one did it for me, but there were people that helped me move forward. They give you hints on how to do it. Yeah, and, I, and I, mentors that help you. Mentors, you know, what is it? Constituents, confidants, mm-hmm. all, mm-hmm. all that, whatever. Mm-hmm. But there were people along the way mm-hmm. that helped me move forward because I wanted it. Yeah, mm-hmm. and then I understood that you mm-hmm. can't change someone; you can only help them help themselves. And then you said, "Why don't I go to a place where eighty percent of people want to learn, and that's a seminar? Maybe that made you want to become a seminar leader." No, not necessarily. Mm-hmm. Um, because of, in my business, I had a emotional attachment to all my employees because they worked for me day in and day and out. And you cared for them. They were a family for you. They were mm-hmm. they were an arm from your body. Correct. Mm-hmm. So then, but then with the with the speaking, mm-hmm. what I'm doing is I cast out a net to the people who mm-hmm. want to change. So mm-hmm. if there's 150 people in the room, there's just mm-hmm. 500. Mm-hmm. They're gonna hear my voice. They will understand the message, and then those people will come to me and say, "Look, I'm the, I'm that person. Right. So I want to change." You, you focus on the positive guys, not on the ones that are like doubters right. or the ones that are not interested. You focus on the right. ones that you know will but, but, receive. But the it. ones that come to you oftentimes are open. You know, there's more of an openness because they're you know coming to you. They're paying you know to get in, right? So they're you know have the different mindset. So that's a positive for you, right? Not, so necess- you- not necessarily. Mm-hmm. There's some. There's are a lot of people who go to events uh, for fantasy. Really, fantasy. Oh. So if you if you read the book, there's mm-hmm. a difference between like mm-hmm. fantasy and a goal. Mm-hmm. But fantasy helps people escape real life. Ah. So they feel good by going to these events and like getting, they actually oh, did the thing. Yeah, yeah, I did it. So, I did so, it. So, so, oh, I already boost. attended that that yeah. thing. Oh, okay. Pretty much, and it's not for uh-huh. me. <laughs> no, no. Even if they say it's for me, like yeah. they can recite, you know, the stuff that you say. Mm-hmm. But they fantasize while uh, going to these events, or they fantasize mm-hmm. while doing personal development. Mm-hmm. But it's not. They're not really about that life. So they're think, not living it. So you still Correct. think you still think it's twenty percent then, even at a seminar, or is it a little bit higher? No, it's smaller. Really? Yeah, that's smaller. definitely. Wow. I mean, in my in my company, because my company was mm. was fourteen people. So if you do mm. two out of ten, that's still in my company. It was twenty mm. percent. Ah. But in population, we're talking yeah. about two percent. Mm. Man, so pretty much in this time, like, there's the constant battle Dr. Avila and I always have. Mm -hmm. Doctor, are we focusing on reaching the people that want to hear the message or the ones that are not hearing it? And we come to a conclusion that it might not be a podcast about entertainment, per se. Like, I mean, society perceives entertainment and pleasure, but our focus is to reach that one person. If it reaches one person... We feel yeah. satisfied, and exactly. that's the whole point with with this. And I think that's right. what you're teaching us too with your message that you got to focus mm-hmm. on the light. And as you go and you pass through the journey, mm-hmm. whoever rubs off of it, great. But you cannot bring people and force them to change. They have they have to reach that level on their own, right? Exactly. Correct. And you mm-hmm. know, planting the seed, you know, he plants this one person can spread it to another person and so forth. You know, so mm-hmm. that's the light. Uh, no, but you talk about influencers, right? You say there's some people that influence you in a negative way. Both directly and indirectly, you know, whether it's through their facial expressions. Uh, I think you were saying that even your mom wanted you to go to college, but you did not want to go to college. Yeah, man. And, How and, did that and, go? And, and this is going to be a controversial topic because a lot of mamas are going to say, "Well, you don't want to go to college." Right. But tell us about that story. Like, uh, <laughs> man, it's funny because because I think like two days ago, man, my mom called me. And she was still talking. Are, are, are you at UCLA right now? Yeah, dude. She, uh, yeah, we were just talking about it, and, and what I was like, UCLA? "Mom, look, look what I've done," and uh, we're still talking about college. And she's yeah. like, "Hey, man, like, like you, it helps you with the degree." Right. I asked her a question. I said, Mom, if I'm the CEO of the company, who do I have to give my resume to? Uh, ex- you know, and, and what did you say when you told the? Hey, uh, well, you know, uh, I still want you to go. To well, parents, it's, you know, it's a paper. It's, the, it's a paper that counts. And I'm it's like, a parent thing. You know? we, we love our kids to go. You're to like, college. Mom, I can I can print one, please. <laughs> <laughs> but you're self-taught, aren't you, Andy? I mean, you've learned a lot on your own. You know, through life, I guess, through books. Yeah, no, not necessarily through books. I think the the majority of my education has been through other people. Mm-hmm. You know my my circle. If you look, if I looked at my phone book right now, mm-hmm. there's more people who are older than me. Ah, I made a I joke. Love that. I made a joke uh, the <laughs> other day. Yes. Um, I was talking to Charlie China, who is the yeah. vice president of sales for Lightspeed VT, uh-huh. and Eric Stoller, who's the CEO of Strategic Seminars. So I'm talking to these two individuals, mm-hmm. and you know they're helping me, and mm-hmm. we're just you know they're my friends. They're older guys, fifty year olds. They're my right, exactly. Yeah. I'm saying to myself, I'm saying <laughs> one one person said, "Oh, I, I turned 51 in a couple of weeks." The other one's like, oh, "I'm 51 now," <laughs> and, and I'm like, like, "I'm 22." <laughs> I'm 20 plus, right? I'm 20. I guess Dr. Avila and so he's like channeling an older man. You know? Yeah, that's yeah. probably that's yeah. what I was thinking. So you know, he has an older essence. Older to him. soul, 
himself, yeah. older soul that exactly. he carries himself as an individual like that. And the beauty about it, I think, mm-hmm. is that he woke up and recognized who he was because mm-hmm. it, it's the same thing in my case. Like mm-hmm. I've always been drawn to older people. Mm-hmm. That's why I do the podcast with Dr. Avila because mm-hmm. it doesn't matter. Hey, if I'm age. younger than you. What are you talking about? You're, you're only 21, <laughs> Dr. Course, Avila. I'm 18. <laughs> <laughs> At least if, uh, spiritually. <laughs> That's how we are, definitely. But I, I believe that anybody that you surround yourself with, like you said earlier, is going to mm-hmm. give you some something to take away. Mm-hmm. And I feel like I get more from a person that already lived, mm-hmm. that can already turn around the block and knows what's coming in sort of a way. I know life is never predictable, but mm-hmm. you can see the patterns, you know? And somebody that has already crossed that bridge can come back and tell you, you know what, at the end of the day, these are the choices because they're not focused on our age group. Our age groups, Mm -hmm. people are Mm -hmm. thinking about partying and doing all this. And you can do that as Mm -hmm. an executive, Mm -hmm. but everything has a balance. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of people don't want to have the balance, and that's one of the losses. Exactly. But also he talks about positive people and people that have a higher level nature, right? So I'm going to have to steal a line from you again because you have a lot of good lines. Uh, He says, you're the average of the five people you're closest to, right? You know, your personality. Yeah. So in other words, think of the five people that you surround yourself with. That's kind of, you know, that's going to be kind of your nature a little bit. I, I, didn't, I didn't say that. Um, uh, I, I, I paraphrase, but go ahead. Yeah, yeah. No, no, I, I, know, I, know, I think uh, Jim Rohn is the one that said that. Oh, you said that. Okay, so you quoted him saying that. Okay. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't, that's not my quote. Okay, but you agree with that. Tell us why you agree with that. I, I do agree with that because in the book, I talk about the two different type of influencers. You mm-hmm. have the indirect influencer mm-hmm. and then you have the verbal director. Mm-hmm. So to sum it up, indirect influencer mm-hmm. is a person who, based on their actions, after you say something, affects the way that you think. Then you have the verbal director who actually tells you, hey, this is what you need to do with your life. Indirect influ- influencer example. Hey, hey, uh, Nachin, I want to go to, I want to start a business. <laughs> Start a business. Start a business. Oh, right. Okay, because he, he's laughing at you, Nachin. Don't, right. don't take it personal. Yeah, no, but, but because, because of that laugh, it's like it makes you double guess yourself. Now, right. part of you wants to start a business. The other part of you is like, wait, Nachin, based on you know his reaction, I, I shouldn't start a business. So therefore, I'm in balance. So that's an indirect influencer. Then the verbal director is the individual that tells you, look, this is what you need to do, which is either in alignment with your goals or not in alignment with your goals. Right. Mm. So you gotta kind of like. Really, really set yourself up apart from the pack by really realizing who you're talking to and what kind of individual is that kind of person and whether you want to have them around you or not, right? Correct. Mm-hmm. Definitely. But he also talks about the the uh, points of greatness or the thoughts of greatness. Thoughts of, thoughts of greatness. And I think that was really a strong part of his whole platform. Mm-hmm. It's not just, you know, not be ordinary, right? Not be average, but how to be great. And one point you talk about is uh, implementation. Now, implementation, you know, to actually act upon your goals. When I met Andy, you know, I went to see Les Brown, you know, which is a famous speaker. And Andy was speaking, too. Oh, he uh, but, was there? Yeah, he, no, he, was, he was speaking. Oh, Andy, he me five, but, bro. You're, you're up there, man. <laughs> no, but, but this is it. So I, I introduced myself. We talked a little it was, bit. It was my conference. Uh, oh, minute, I was going to say that. Give no, me but, double five. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but see, as uh, you know, he's a speaker, but then I saw him walking around, you know, really fast and talking to people. And then it turned out that he actually organized and ran the whole conference man. with all these big, big name speakers. So he is a master, I think, of implementation, right? You know, taking the, the step and actually acting. Yeah. Uh, in the book, he talks about uh, people that, you know, take their blessings too soon. For right. example, they have a little success, and, you know, they, they live off that laurel, but then they don't keep acting. So they lose that blessing. And I think people that win the lottery, you are mentioning, right? Someone wins a lottery for a million bucks, and then they're on welfare a year later because they didn't maintain that, that blessing, right? They didn't they, take action. They kind of, like, sat and became lazy. Definitely. They didn't do anything anymore. They didn't feed that energy to continue, right? Because I think at the end of the day in life, you got to continue feeding whatever you want to do. Um, one thing that I understand, like, for instance, yesterday I went out. I'm feeding my YouTube channel. Mm-hmm. And I went out to do, it's a hobby for me, but I went out to do something on tacos. I love tacos. Mm-hmm. So I went mm-hmm. around and I invited a buddy of mine and he came along. He was helping me with the camera. Mm-hmm. But when I came back home and I was analyzing the footage, I realized that he wasn't putting himself into it. Mm-hmm. And I said, you know what? It's not his gig. He doesn't care for it. I said, if it's going to take me at the one-man team to do it, I'm going to do it. Mm. I said, yeah, I might have, in my mind, wasted those hours being out there, but I think it wasn't a waste because I learned to not depend. I learned to be on my own. And I think a lot of times we, we kind of blame others and we don't want to take responsibility. The moment you mm. take responsibility for your actions and for who you are, I think that's the moment you shift. Yeah, that, that, that's, a, that's definitely a lesson. 
Definitely. Mm-hmm. And um, really? I was looking at the camera when you replied. I'm sorry. Because we're also, uh, we're going to have this on our YouTube channel, Love University. By the way, you're in good form today, Nachin. I see you very mellow today. Now, yeah. now it is a Saturday morning. Yeah, it is. So I don't know if that makes a change, you know, in terms of, you know, your it, energy. It is, it, doctor. It's different, right? Because yeah. we, yeah. we decided to change our taping days. We mm-hmm. used to do Thursdays, but I told Dr. Avila, you afternoon. know what? I have a very active lifestyle right now. Mm-hmm. I changed careers. I'm moving more into the advertisement end mm-hmm. instead of just being a presenter. Right. And, I said, if I don't do it, I'm not, I'm not going to get done. So mm-hmm. I've been concentrating. I've been real busy. Like, I get up, and I go to sleep, like, at 12, get up at 6, 12, and then the next day is the same thing. So mm-hmm. it was kind of hectic for yeah. me. So we spoke about it, and I said, right. why don't we do it on a Saturday? And, right. and I said, it's because mm-hmm. I want to do this with good energy right. and a day exactly. that's more relaxed. The morning and, energy, right? The, yeah. the freshness. So it, uh, it comes back to the changes, right? Mm-hmm. Making changes in your life to make it suitable to get to that goal, you would say? Of course, man. Of course. If... if if that's that's considered a thought of great a thought of greatness. Mm, mm, mm. It's the thoughts and ideas that are produced in your mind that is a direction towards your goal. So mm-hmm. if if you vision yourself, which is what we call COV, mm-hmm. the completion of your vision, if you vision yourself being more energetic, and you do it on a Thursday night and you're not energetic, that's gonna affect mm-hmm. you know the, the the two energies. It's gonna mm-hmm. affect the the success of this co- the podcast. success of this podcast. Yeah. Now here's the thing. Talking about goals, I mean, I read a lot of books, and of course, I'm in the, the field of psychology, but there are four interesting points here, uh, Andy, about goals that I really haven't heard too much of. I'm going to just mention them briefly, okay? I just want to get your take on them. Uh, the first one was uh, write down incompletion affects. In other words, I think what you mean is um, what happens if you don't meet the goal? Hmm. Tell us a little bit about that. That's interesting. So many people would actually disagree with me. Because it's we're talking about the you know the negative, mm-hmm. but but dude, you got to be self aware, man. You got you got to know what who who it affects when you don't complete your goal. You who know, it affects when you don't. Who it affects? Mm-hmm. There was a woman at my sales conference, right? My sales conference that I hosted last uh, mm-hmm. week and a half ago at the LAX Marriott. A woman who was who's homeless wow. in Las Vegas oh. saw me on a Facebook live with Les Brown. Mm. Calls my cell phone because I gave it out on the Facebook mm-hmm. live. Calls my cell phone. And she can't, she can't get through. It's busy because so many people were bombarding right. my phone. But she eventually gets through. She talks to me. And I tell her, regardless if you're homeless, you need to be at this conference. Right. And this conference is a life changer. Well, you know, she goes through her fears. You know, she takes her time. But she eventually calls me and buys a ticket for $500. Man. It took her 15 hours to get the money. $500 ticket. And then she has to pay for a flight. She doesn't even have enough for a hotel or a car. Right. But she makes it. She makes it here. Now, my goal was to have this conference. I didn't know who it would affect. Right. It took me 96 days to have this conference. Mm-hmm. Whole three months. She bought the ticket the day before the event actually took place. <sighs> so I did not know this conference was going to affect her. I did not even know her. Mm-hmm. Then I called her for an update after the event. She said, Andy, I'm, I've, been, I've been closed mouth about my situation for 20 years. Mm-hmm. She was abused and raped as a as a young woman Man. and and they they you know they mm-hmm. broke into her house or whatever the situation was but she was raped as a young woman and she was like i've been silent all these years and then on top of that i have a book in me and i've been wanting to get this book out but i've never mm-hmm. have been able to get the book out so i call her for the update she's like i'm ready to be a speaker i'm starting with my book i'm gonna have it done by october 20th nice that's amazing that's good so but so who who does my uh, conference affect which was my goal Right. It affected her. Now it's going to affect her kids, and it ah. could affect her income. Okay. See okay. The power in that machine. So not only what will my who my who will my goal affect if I complete it, mm-hmm. but who will my goal if uncompleted affect? Right. In other words, the people that do not benefit from my goal being completed. That that so is a good analysis. That's a reversal of of, of energy, right? Um, one thing going back to that. When she called you, did it ever pass by your mind when she told you that she was homeless? Have you given her the ticket? For free. For free? No, because my belief on giving free tickets mm-hmm. is that people don't actually value it. You pay you pay for it, you you're gonna value it. You're gonna know what it took to get there. No, yeah, yeah. dude, it's it's five hundred dollars, I'm gonna go get my five hundred dollars worth. Mm-hmm. I give it to you for free, you come mm-hmm. to the same event. Yeah, and it's whatever. Like, mm-hmm. uh, dude, it was a free it was a free event, man. Cool. No, what did you ask that question, Nachin? Are you thinking from a charity point of view or Yeah, from a charity point of view, because I'm a very giving person. No, you're a loving person, right? And and I love to give help. I love to give people. And I've questioned myself a lot of times through this journey. Am I doing the right thing by helping others, like with free information? Like, for instance, in my field of marketing, like I I handle the digital and also FM, radio, and TV marketing placement. And I realize I feel like sometimes I met other people 
that are just flirtatious and that are mm-hmm. con. Mm-hmm. Like they go to you and they mm-hmm. ask you for information. Right. So they're trying and, to take advantage pretty much. Yeah. yeah to get but stuff here. because of my good heart. Uh-huh. I've ta- I've been taken advantage of, so, right. so I'm trying to gauge that. So it's kind, I guess. it's kind of a balance, you know. I mean, yeah. you want to give love, mm-hmm. but you know, you want to be rational too. I mean, that's I guess, true. You're talking yeah. about, you know, the value of something that you earn, right? You're saying. Mm-hmm. I mean, you come from that background. You work very hard for everything, no? Your Look, background. if if you're trying to help, you know, a couple of days ago, I was on Skid Row. Mm-hmm. I gave out, I don't know, 50, 50 slices of of pizza. You know, fed 50 people with pizza, and then went to McDonald's and bought 55 cheeseburgers wow. and gave it all out to Skid Row. Mm-hmm. But look, if you are trying to help a drug addict, right, it takes money to buy drugs. Yeah. So these people have the ability to get money. Mm, that's it's true. About, it's about what they get in the for money what for. what they want. Yeah, it's for, about the, if I'm gonna if I'm actually gonna I just wanted to feed some people for the day. Right. I wasn't trying to change anyone's life. I, I mm-hmm. here's a cheeseburger. Mm-hmm. I'm out here preaching to you. I'm yeah. out here right. saying here. here's a cheeseburger. Yeah. So, very practical kind of thing. If mm-hmm. if if they want it, they're gonna get it. Mm-hmm. I don't want I don't want I don't want mm-hmm. to have someone in the room who got a free ticket in there mm-hmm. and, and I'm trying to help them change their life. Mm. There, there's, there's been deals I cut. You have to pay something. Mm-hmm. I know right now you probably can't afford a five hundred dollar ticket mm-hmm. or a thousand dollar program, mm-hmm. but you gotta pay something. So if I'm right. gonna give you a, if I, this mm-hmm. is a charity, dude, you gotta pay something. Right. And you and you have to pay an mm-hmm. amount that I know to stretch for you. Mm-hmm. So if you tell me you make a hundred dollars a week, mm-hmm. I want you to pay three hundred bucks. Yeah. Well, it's kind of like in the good book. They said. Yeah. Uh, you know, when a, something costs you, it has value, you know? Right. You know, whether it's a donation or something, you know, there's something in it. If it's free, you know, then sometimes there's not a value in it, you know, for the tithes and things like that. So I can see what you're saying, Andy. If I was a girl, I wouldn't give it up for free. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, we'll see about that. <laughs> and he has, a, he has a very good uh, female voice. Uh, Doc, voice? Dr. Uh, Aguilar good? likes to fantasize on it. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think so. <laughs> nah, dude, don't, don't, don't say stuff Only like that. Only in Spanish. Don't say stuff He's like a little that, bit dude. out of control. <laughs> don't say stuff like that. It's funny. <laughs> it's humor. You can take life too serious either way. You uh, know? That's true. Yeah. That's, those are the young years used. You know, I yeah. commend you for everything you've but, done. But he's a little too serious. Times, so I know, and that's that's yeah. the one thing that I tell Doctor Avila. Yeah. You can't take life too serious. As you right. get older, you're gonna realize that. Ask one of your mentors, all yeah. the people that know everything right. about positivity, right. and you're gonna realize that it's just about mm-hmm. words and yeah. enjoying the moment. I think you're learning that because, and you told me that you, when you came out here, you didn't smile, right? You didn't laugh because you were raised in a tough environment, right? Where if you smile, it seems you're weak. Mm-hmm. And you told me you went to church and you started to smile, right? And it changed a little bit. Last year, what well, yeah. church in, in LA? I was going to church in Rhode Island, but when uh-huh. I came to church in LA, uh-huh. there was a, there was a major shift. Right. So tell me why? Why were you like serious, and now you're a little more smiley, but not not too smiley, but a little bit more. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I was doing a good job. <laughs> man. You're working on it, bro. <laughs> uh, well, so mm-hmm. I come from you know the impoverished environment that I come from in Rhode Island. Mm-hmm. There's is it called the ghetto or other? It's it's a it's a ghetto. You know, mm-hmm. call call it what you want. Call it the hood. Call it the ghetto. Call mm-hmm. it I call it home. You know, mm-hmm. so. In in that environment, the way that I protected myself mm-hmm. was because of my it was my demeanor, mm-hmm. but because of my body structure, yeah, I, I was able to get away with a lot of things. Right. I mm-hmm. never got jumped, thank God, knock on wood. Yeah. I never got I never got jumped, I never got shot at, never got stabbed. Yeah. But I, I think people would look at me and say, Dude, I don't know what this guy's up to. Mm. Don't mess with him. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because yeah. once once you give show people I your hand, right. then then that they know your weaknesses. Mm-hmm. So with mm-hmm. me, you see me at the you see me at a party, you see me at the corner, and I'm not smiling, but I'm looking at you. Mm-hmm. You don't know if I ha- you know you don't know what's <laughs> you going on. What's coming? You, 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 yeah, you don't know what's coming. <laughs> you, you, don't, you don't know what's what, what, what's actually happening. Yeah. Yeah. But if I'm if I'm in there like smiling, jumping up right. and down, you right. know your plans of attack. Right. right. They're like that uh, song by uh, Snoop Dogg. Survival, right? That's the key. If you're soft, you're lost. There's a lyrics by Snoop Dogg that he's talking about a rap song, and it's true because it's different different levels of life mm. it's where you come from that makes you a lot of people mm. live in a you know nice fantasy world but yeah. most of us or county or something uh, yeah most of us yeah most <laughs> of us are not that that one percent you know exactly and yeah. we we talk right. to right. everybody that yeah. at least we hear we try to make a general message right but he's learning i think you're learning that humor is a powerful weapon and tool mm-hmm. for connection you know and you know and laughter and smiling Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, little by little, you know, that's something very positive. You know, because mm-hmm. it is lovey energy that's being extended. You know, when you smile right. at someone, you know, hey, I, I like you. You know, this is it's nice. And realizing that every every situation is different. You know, yes, you're mm-hmm. you're not there. You're moving on in life, mm-hmm. and every person is different. And giving everybody that chance, you know, to to be right. themselves. I think you have a good heart. I can sense mm-hmm. you. Know? You do you do care, right? 
in China. The, of course. And, you know, my mom my mom noticed that, too. She told me that recently, that I have a good heart. Yes. But when I was home, it was it didn't seem that way because oh. of my demeanor. Yeah. Oh, were you kind of rough? Or? No, because he was, he was oh. his body language was interpreting silence. More serious. And, and yeah. stone, stone okay. face. Like, you know what? I'm here. Is just your mom like a loving kind of guy? Or she, she very yeah. much like is. Hugging and stuff. Yeah. She, she, yeah. Very, she very much is a church yeah. woman. Okay. Lo- love, loving woman. So I, I get okay. that from her. Mm-hmm. But based on the environment, you can't move yeah. forward that right. way. Yeah. But now you're in L.A., man. You can smile, right? Yeah. And, 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 <laughs> let's go to Venice uh, Beach. Putting your sunglasses right and, you know. And but uh, so my COV, my mm-hmm. completion of vision, when mm-hmm. I visioned myself in LA, I saw myself smiling. Ah. I saw myself happy. Uh-huh. Right. So I wanted to when I when I landed, I wanted to make that a reality like, as soon as possible. I like that. So mm-hmm. because of the church and the people uh-huh. I got around, right. you know, I, I made sure because I'm in a new environment, mm-hmm. not to hang out with people who are in, in bad things. Yes. Because I knew that I would end up going backwards. Mm-hmm. But by the way, uh, another friend that we have is my son Andy over here. Who's yeah, also what's named up, Andy? Andy. 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 Uh, six yeah. six uh, basketball player. He came by. He's helping us with, with the YouTube channel <laughs> feed exactly. here uh, uh, behind the scenes. They're gonna play a little basketball after after class, right? And you know what? <laughs> Looking at these two young men, Doctor Avila, strong and my- mentally. That's yeah. what I see. I mm-hmm. see that it's a generation shift. Mm-hmm. That yes. at one point, um, you know, I thought about like, what's gonna happen? I mean, mm-hmm. yeah, I'm here. I'm gonna be gone. But the next generation, what's the mm-hmm. world they're gonna face? But seeing Definitely. individuals like yes. both Andy's the, here, the, the I realize ones. that. Mm-hmm. It's a better place that's coming, you know. I think so, Even yeah. if we're not here, there's people that are structuring themselves and being strong about yeah, that. Yeah, and they're you know they're thinking evolutionary wise, you know, in the future, right? You know, mm-hmm. how my actions impact. Okay, a couple more things, Andy. Okay, you said write down who will keep you accountable. In other words, for your goals. In other words, who's that person that's going to call you and say you're doing well or not? Right, right. That's Look, right. at the, at the end of the day, in my opinion, and I believe this heart, uh, departedly is that you need to have other individuals who can help you progress, who mm-hmm. can actually move you forward. It's harder to do it on your own, so take the easier route and help have other people help you. Push you. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so mm-hmm. so write down, you know, when you're writing down your goals, besides, you know, putting date and, and searching for mentors, have people who you can depend on that, A, are you doing what you're supposed to do? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Can you keep me accountable? I need you to keep me accountable and move forward. Mm-hmm. Definitely. Also, celebrating small wins, and I like this one because it yeah. fits with our you know, idea of momentum. You know, right? Like every little moment you step forward gives you more power, right? Gives you more energy, and you talk about that too, right? To celebrate the small wins. Mm-hmm. I've I've studied many successful people, and what I what I've noticed is that they celebrate small wins, but they don't go all out. Mm-hmm. Right. They don't go all out. Mm-hmm. So the night of my conference, so mm-hmm. this is what, what, what I would have done many years ago. Right. The night of my conference would have been a party for the weekend. <laughs> oh, yeah. Right? But instead, yeah. I, I, I smiled at the end of the conference. A little steak, maybe. Or something. And, I said, yeah. and I said, okay, what's next? Thank you. What's next? It's over. It's yeah. over. Yeah. So I celebrated a small win with a smile, with uh-huh. grace, a prayer. Right. And then next, what is next? Right. It's like it, a, uh, in a play, uh, you have a playoff win, you have a little bit of wine, mm-hmm. but you don't drink champagne until the championship game right mm. yeah. powerful yeah. I like that. that's a good one I yeah. Yeah. I'm but, the, that. but <laughs> the idea is to actually acknowledge that you did something good for as small as it is mm. actually acknowledge it because at one point it was a thought and you accomplished right. it so your right. first conference mm-hmm. right yeah. mm-hmm. you know what he said that's something powerful mm. he said it was a thought yes chapter one it begins with a thought mm-hmm. the power mm-hmm. of thought and action mm-hmm. definitely the seed right the seed was a thought that you had and it yeah. became the reality mm-hmm. uh, now I'm going to say one thing here uh, you know like in every book Usually, there's one great takeaway that makes the book worth the price, right? Right. Okay. Now, of course, I brought you a dinner, but, you know, you gave me a book, so I didn't pay for it. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, uh, this is the takeaway I like. Now, he says, uh, well, be down with OPP. Now, remember that old song, OPP? How does it yeah, go? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going to OPP or something. Something uh, like that. Something like that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but he means uh, always positive people or only positive people. That's a uh, good one. And, and then he actually adds something to it that's interesting. He says, for the negative people, right, the people that take away your energy, don't try to just kick them out of your life because there could be repercussions, right? Maybe they'll come right. after you in some way. But he says this, instead of getting rid of the negative people, become so productive in actualizing your thoughts of greatness that you don't have time to entertain negative people. That's a good way Think of doing about that, it. Yeah. So that you're, you're putting right. yourself in the other lane. Instead of being in right. that lane that's broken on the freeway, you're like, why am I driving through this when there's like other lanes that I can jump Definitely. on? Or you're raising your platform, right? You're going yeah. to a little higher elevation so yeah. the, the negative doesn't bother you. Tell us more about that idea. You know, I, I, I cut. I would say cutting off a lot of people is not really my forte. I've done it. Mm-hmm. I will do it if I need to. Yeah. 
But I more so just, dude, I'm just too busy right now to ha- to even mm. have a conversation with you, man. Peace. Yeah. Yeah. In, in a positive, you know, like, you know, I'm just at a different level, right? That's I'm right. just at a different because I'm looking to help people. So I don't want to yeah. cut off people unless you're really a threat. Yeah. Uh, not not a threat mm-hmm. as in competition, but right. you really could affect me negatively. Right. I won't cut you off, but dude, I'm just too busy right now. Man, I'm on a podcast. I can't talk to you on the phone about yeah. about drugs right now. Yeah, no, whatever. Yeah, yeah. No, <laughs> or let's or, talk or, about or, what or concert we're gonna go to. You know, yeah, or, or the yeah. Talk, talk, what what concert, dude? You know, yeah. I made a comment on my uh, event. I said you you're here instead of at a rap concert. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Exactly. No, you, you, you want it to change, so it's my mm-hmm. responsibility to deliver the value that you need. It's pretty much what you do is you mm-hmm. restructure people's ways of looking at life because a lot of people, mm-hmm. we tend to be lost mm-hmm. in what they call the matrix, meaning like the whole consumerism aspect of things, you know, what we get fed on mm-hmm. entertainment. Mm-hmm. And you say, no, look, step out of that and come and see another road. Come and see a little different light. And I think that what I take from this message and mm-hmm. from this podcast mm-hmm. is that you're not forcing people. Whoever wants it will mm-hmm. go and get it. I like that. Yeah, mm-hmm. build it and they will come, as they say. Right. Mm-hmm. The other thing is, I like this phrase: uh, "Success is the best revenge," mm-hmm. because many times people try to get back other people. Well, they said this to me. You know, it's mm-hmm. like this competition. But when you're at a higher level, right, you're succeeding and you're helping people. That is the best revenge, right? You know, that's a transformation of thought. Yeah. So you don't have to, you know, try to get back at others. I'm sure people have hurt you in the past, right? You know, in of different course. ways. But instead of trying to get back at them, what do you say? Peace out. Success is no, the best no, 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 that's what I, no, no, I did that on perfect. I did that on perfect. What do I say? I don't say anything. That's good. I, 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 I you succeed, right? You take yeah. action. I, I don't say anything. There's been people on social media who, you know, talk, try to talk me down right. and so on and so forth. Haters and stuff. But then I post a, a picture of a video like this. Hey, hey we're on a podcast yeah. right now. Exactly. Yeah. Dude, and, and the, guy, the guy's on his laptop, on his, on his laptop <laughs> in, in the home in the dark. Exactly. And he's like, <sighs> Andy, oh, and exactly. start typing. Exactly. Yeah. Dude, dude, I'm working. Yeah. I'm working, right. and and I actually learned right. I, I in the beginning of my journey, I was affected by the people who talked bad about. You me. will let them get mm-hmm. to you. Well, yeah, it, it will get to sensitivity. Me. Yeah. And, but then I realized that's actually a good thing. Recently, with my conference, there was somebody who was talking bad about me, and I was like, "Whoa! There's somebody <laughs> talking bad about me. Oh, I made make... it. I made it. There you go. That's Man. Good point, yeah. Yeah. I made it. Yo, keep doing it. Keep talking. <laughs> yeah, I made motivation. It. Motivation. It's yeah. like Michael Jordan, right? He'd say, yeah. "You know, people talk bad about me. It gives me fuel to get better." And, 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 and it's know. true because and, and those that's, people that's are the ones that are lost, and you're showing them, like you said, with your theories, is how you affect them by example. You're, you're showing them that you know what, Action. dude. You're you're there. You're stagnant in second gear, bro. Right. You got to kick it into third, exactly. yeah, fifth. Why yeah. not? Right. Yeah, no, so you told, told me about some of your you know bad, bad experiences, right? People that have been negative. Mm-hmm. So in the same way, right, with the podcast and things we're doing now, yeah, you know, you're showing them, right, that you know the success is the best revenge, right? The success is the best revenge, but like you said, Andy, I, I've also blocked people. I have oh. my phone and oh, I block did? people because okay. I knew. So you're all tougher than he is. Eh? It, it was it was yeah. done. I was at a point where I'm like. Mm-hmm. I look at myself like a battery pack. In the morning, I wake up. I thank God for giving me another day. Mm -hmm. But I realize that I have energy. I recharge my batteries. And throughout the day, whatever I use that energy on is going to deplete my battery level. So if in one thought, if I'm thinking about somebody that's not even going to give me anything positive, I'm already draining myself. It may hurt you, too. So Mm -hmm. I say, you know what? I'm not hurt. Mm -hmm. I just realize that Mm -hmm. that's not for me. Thank you, and you were a chapter in my life, and I'm moving forward, and I want to write different chapters with different Buddy, are you, are you too nice to do that? It's hard for you to do that? To what? To cut people off or no? No, right. if, you, if you look at my block list on my phone, I got a few block numbers. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I, got, I got a few block yeah. Sometimes you got to... So, so you're getting a little tougher in your older age. <laughs> Sometimes... <laughs> 22. Like, you, literally got, you literally have to yeah. do what you got to do yeah. in order to move forward. <laughs> right. But you can do care about people, and that's what I'm noticing. You know, you really want to help people. Right? Yeah. So it is hard for you to let people go. You know, but sometimes, you know, you're moving upward, right? That's the key. Of course. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Of course. Now, I think our bodyguard is telling us our time may be up. You know, we're up uh, then. Uh, yeah, uh, we're up at, <laughs> at 48 minutes, the longest uh, podcast we've ever done. History. Hey, we did it, man. It's been believe. very it's interesting. interesting. You, you, you actually revolutionized you so much. Love University. Definitely, uh, because at the end of the day, Dr. Mm-hmm. Avila, we mm-hmm. want to bring people that mm-hmm. affect others in a positive way. And Definitely. we want to thank you for your time. Because hey, bro, we got to go for 12 more minutes then. Let's, Let's go. go. Well, first of all, we got to go for 12 more minutes. It's not going to come out in the video. I'm cool with that. Yeah, bro. That's cool. I mean, you got to transition them and say, oh, camera cut off. You need to go to the podcast to finish <laughs> yeah, this. Yeah, let's do it. Yeah, exactly. Let's do that. So, so that way you got the viewers on there to come on here. Yeah. Th- definitely. So, yeah. So I like that motivation now. Okay. One thing you may even mention that was a very interesting technique is you almost like, I don't know if you want to use the word force, but you go into places where you don't know if you belong, but you make it. You make yourself belong. 
You talking about some dinner you went to? Tell us about that. How did that go? <laughs> like, in other words, okay. he, 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 he persists until he gets what he wants. He goes in there. Yeah. T- t- tell us about that story. Gotcha, gotcha. The art of networking. It, mm. There was a. Are you familiar with Grant Cardone? No. Grant, Grant Cardone is a hectic millionaire uh-huh. and, a, and a social media influencer in the entrepreneur space. Okay. And so, millions of dollars, millions of people following him. It's just me, Andy Ardate. Now, I know who Andy Ardate is. 20 year old man from, right. from you know, he's, East Coast. He's a 58 or 59 year old man from <laughs> Miami, Florida, who was in LA. Now, right. I know who Andy Ardate is, and I know where I'm going. Right. That's someone I, mm. I'm going to have in my circle. Mm. So, there was a conference in Los Angeles. Now, here's the thoughts of greatness, right? Thoughts of greatness is defined as thoughts or ideas pro- produced in your mind that is a direction. That is pretty much an alignment of your goal. Mm-hmm. So my goal is for him to be in my circle at one point, right? So I get a message. Okay, you know, this man is in Los Angeles. I live in Los Angeles. He's Why not? I live in Los Angeles. So where is he? He's at a conference, speaking at a conference. Mm-hmm. My thought of greatness was to go to the conference. Now, there was a point that I was actually imbalanced. It's not bad to be imbalanced, but the good thing is to, to identify it. Mm-hmm. So there was a point that I was imbalanced. Should I go to the conference mm-hmm. or should I not go to mm-hmm. the conference? Pros and cons type stuff. Mm-hmm. Then... Three o'clock comes. The conference started at 10. It ends at 7 p.m. If I go to the conference, I still have to pay full price for a ticket. Right. Mm-hmm. So three o'clock comes. I'm still in balance, but I make a decision to do what? Take action and move forward. Mm-hmm. I get to the conference at 5 p.m. I only have two hours left to the conference, mm-hmm. and I still have to pay full price for the ticket. Mm-hmm. Uh, how much was the ticket? It was like $100 or something okay. like that. Yeah. You know, so, um, so here's, here's where the thoughts of greatness led me in the right direction. Right. There was a man who has a podcast. I've been trying to get his attention for a long time. Yeah. Hey, brother. Hey, let me put me on your. Let me put me on your show. <laughs> whatever. Whatever. Yeah. So, during the time that I walk in, even though I came in extremely late, I see the guy. He sees me. He says, "Hey, aren't you that motivational speaker that has been 20, trying to get at me? That twenty-two year old. Yeah. Hey, let's switch numbers now. What? Let's get in contact now. Hmm. You know. So now I got his contact information. We're gonna do some work in the future. And we'll continue moving forward. Two hours passed. The conference ends. Yeah. I look at Grant Cardone. I say, hey, brother, can I take a picture with you? He is this, this is a billionaire, bill, you said? Or a rich guy? He's a millionaire. He's a hectic million. So hundreds. Okay. hundred what, million. What? Well, he An has, influencer. Big, he, powerful. He has 540, guy. $540 million in assets. Damn. Wow. So he's basically half a billionaire. Pretty yeah. Much. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And successful. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, so I say, can I take a picture with you? You just got off stage. Can I take a picture with mm-hmm. you? He says, oh, hold on one second. I got to go get my wife in the conference room. And he goes, he goes into the conference room, and I say to myself, "He's not coming back. He's not coming back." <laughs> so I, I follow him into the conference oh, room. Okay, oh, okay. Rule number one: follow, follow, your, follow the lead. Right, number one. I follow him into the conference. Oh, you're going to take notes? <laughs> I love it. <laughs> I follow him to the conference room, and I'm, I'm, I have a keen eye. I'm just focused on the target. Yeah. You know, and it's, it's nothing bad. Yeah. But. I want to be in this circle. I need to be in the circle, and I'm going to be in the circle. Mm-hmm. But I understand as an influencer that mm-hmm. so many people mm-hmm. bombarding you with pictures and course, yeah. autographs, and I love you, and, sure. and you achieve my life, and all You're this. You're just going to be lost in the pile. It, yeah, so I said, you know, this. I, I, I'm here to take a picture. So I go and take a picture with him eventually, and somebody walks up to him, and he says, hey, where are we going at dinner tonight? And then I hear, I see him <laughs> whisper, Fle- Fleming's. Flemings? Okay. I'm there. I'm the only one that literally heard this in the whole circle. Everyone is is focused on the distractions. Yeah. I'm focused on the target. And Grant Cardone, great man. So I focus on the target. I want to be around his circle. And then next thing that happens is he's walking to the elevator. So I start walking with him to the elevator. <laughs> so I start walking with him and I'm just talking. So I talk my game. Look, I'm not a fan of him. Right. I'm a partner. Yeah. Different mentality. Uh, yeah. Oh, there's a whole bunch mm-hmm. of fans running mm-hmm. up to him, but I come up to him. Hey, I'm a partner. Hey, Grant, I have an opportunity for you. Let's talk about this. Mm-hmm. Next thing you know, he goes in the elevator, goes down, out of, my, out of sight. So I know where he's going to dinner. Uh, before yeah. you go on, can I, do you have a pen handy by any chance? No, I don't. Do you have a pen? Uh, no. I'm going to take some notes. So he, he's going to no? dinner. No. Oh, okay. no. <laughs> so he, I know he's going to dinner. I go to Fleming's. Yeah. There was a man who was following Grant and I as we were walking, and I take him to Fleming's with me. Hey, you sound like a cool guy. Come Let's to Fleming's. Go. I got a gift for you. Watch yeah. this. And so he comes to Fleming's. Like I don't know what you're doing here. I don't know what we're doing. Yeah. I go to the front desk and I say, "Can I have a table for four, please?" And they say, "Okay, there's a party of two, but you're gonna you're ordering a table for four. I said, "Yes, the other two are coming." Yeah. So the reason I said, "Let me get a table for four because I knew that it would give me time to think about how I'm gonna get into the room right. that Grant Cardone walks into. 
So Grant Cardone comes eventually comes into Fleming's, and I see him and his posse go to a, a VIP only room by him, uh, you know, separated from the the masses. The pack, yeah. And I need to get in that room, so I get up out of my seat, I ditch this table, I go to the bathroom, I look myself in the mirror, and I say, "Hey, man, it's time to make some stuff happen." Get out, get out, and I go into the room that Grant Cardone was at. Mm-hmm. I'm not supposed to be there. I sit down. And I look at the waiter and I say, can I have a potato soup and a wine, please? <laughs> and they're like, okay. They order me my potato soup and I'm just chilling there as if I'm supposed to be there. I'm not a fan. I'm not going to act like, oh my goodness, oh my goodness. Hi. I'm a partner. I'm sitting down. Eventually, we're going to do business together. Right. So we start talking. And then what happens is there's, there's opportunities in the show up. I showed up. Mm. Grant Cardone's partner invites me to Vegas to be on his podcast. What? There you go. See what I'm saying? That's amazing. And that would have never happened if you would have sat at your house thinking and thinking about exactly. doing it. The, exactly. The averageness, mm-hmm. right? So you went beyond average. So you follow with intention, right? Uh, you were a partner, not a fan. And what's the third thing you said? Uh, there's opportunity in the show up. There's opportunity in the show up. Right. So just showing up is half yeah. the battle, right? You know, like go to the gym, right? And that's half the battle. Right. But you showed up in a place where I guess, you know, you were not even walking, right? Necessarily, right? Not, not, not necessarily. I mean, well, you, no, you, he wasn't you were not, you were not invited. I wasn't invited. He wasn't no, invited. I, d- yeah. I definitely was mm-hmm. not, invited. not invited. And they know that I wasn't invited, but they're yeah. like, hey, you're a cool guy. You know, why not? <laughs> but once they showed up, so you, you sat there. They were already sitting there, or you walked in when they were not there? They were, they were already sitting there. They were already sitting there. Um, they had just sat down, so they were waiting for a few more people to come. Oh, so they thought you were one of the ones that was showing up? Hey, man. Yeah, I suppose. Maybe. Man. Now, would you say, is this called pressure sales, or do you have a different term for it? I don't have a term for it. I call it life. Right. But, <laughs> That's but, a good way think of about, I mean, no, it, right? I mean, he's yeah. putting himself in there in kind of yeah. a strong energy, right? Yeah. Now, it's not really pressure because you're not really trying to sell them anything, right? You're not trying to sell them anything. So your mindset was, I want to partner with you for a positive goal. All right, for in, in future endeavors. However, look, we need to have a relationship. And how do I separate myself from the masses? Ah, that's a question. You, how do you separate yourself? You got to be the real version of yourself. So the real ah. version of myself said, dude, you deserve to be at that table. You, mm-hmm. This is your environment right ah. here. So take ah, a seat. Okay. So you, you have an excellent relationship with yourself, yes. but also a great relationship with God, right? Mm-hmm. Correct. And that goes hand to hand at everything you do. Mm-hmm. You have to consult God. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Well, I mean, uh, the word deserving is a positive word. You know? I mean, mm-hmm. he deserves, right? I mean, God's blessing, right? Mm-hmm. Sense, right? So you receive from a higher nature, and you believe that God will give you bountifulness, right? You know? I, I believe that the thoughts of greatness come from God. You don't get mm-hmm. the 10th mm-hmm. step, but you get the first step in your mind. Mm-hmm. And once you go to the first step, you'll see the second, you'll see the third as you continue to progress. Ah. So you might have the the vision, mm-hmm. yeah. but you don't have the tenth step. Right. So you got to continue. Now you might you know you might have an idea of what all the steps are, mm-hmm. but you don't have it all. Yeah, we, we yeah. take the first steps in faith, right? You don't know what's going to happen, right? But you claim it, right? In a sense, mm-hmm. right? Is that what you did, right? You you claimed it without seeing it, and there was fear because you said you were torn between the authentic self and the inauthentic self, right? The Part- the. Uh, what do the, you call it? The inner self? The real you and the unfulfilled you. The real you, unfulfilled you. So the unfulfilled you was at home. Oh, I don't know if I should do this right. What was it saying to you, the unfulfilled you? Dude, why would you go and buy a ticket to go there for two hours, <laughs> right. go see a guy speak, and then get off stage? Waste your time. Oh, yeah. No, but I know going to these events, you meet a lot of people, but yeah. I don't get the full bang because yeah. I, I miss a back for the buck, portion right? of yeah. the day. Right, but the show up is the, is the, is the blow up, right? And the goal yeah, itself it? and living through the goal and actually mm-hmm. putting the action into it that made it happen. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, look, so I put it out there on Instagram. I said, I want this guy to know who I am. I took a picture with Grant Cardone mm-hmm. earlier in the year, mm-hmm. and it was at his conference with 2,000 people. Mm-hmm. Right before he went to the bathroom, mm-hmm. I took a picture with him at, at, like, at a podium. Mm-hmm. And he, he took a picture with quick left. He, okay. This dude doesn't know who I am. Mm-hmm. So, <laughs> well, he's going to know now. You're on the podcast, right? Now, yeah. now, is it okay what we're saying to, to, about this? So, of course. So, you, so then yeah. you don't but, get mad. No, no way. No. But, but the, ne- the next thing, the next thing was for him to get to know me. So I put on a, on Instagram. I said, "Look, the one day this guy's gonna get to know yeah. who I am." Mm-hmm. Nah, if I call him, I'm sure he'll know who I am. Of course. Beautiful. You know what? We're reaching that one hour mark. And no, we're not cutting it up. Two hours. No, it's good. Two hours. Not <laughs> not two hours is too much. <laughs> However, I know like with, with podcasts, an hour long is, is, is a great number because a lot of people like to go yeah. for that whole hour and get that, Enjoy those nuggets. Like, see thing, what he yeah. just did? Actually, he did it to us. He led us with intention. Yeah. He wanted a full hour. Right? Yeah. We were going to stop for 40 it. minutes. And he got it, right? Yeah. Because so, he visualized it, right? You know, and put it in his mind. And he yeah. wanted to get the most of it, which right. that's the truth. And we learned something else from him. Exactly. We learned more. We learned more about his journey. Definitely. And more. I think that's and that story. The, that story by itself is a million dollar seller. I think. Yeah. 
Look, the, the, it's not what you know, it's who you know. Mm -hmm. You know, I've progressed a lot in my life mm -hmm. in comparison to others, although I'm not comparing, mm -hmm. but it's because of the people that I know. Right. You know, I know I know Dr. Avila, and there's something that he'll say in my book and say, you know, based on the situation, or based on what I read in the book and based on my past, this and this and that. And then I'm going to take that information, I'm going to say, hmm, that's what his thought process was. Mm -hmm. Is it true? And then move forward with the truth or with the false. Mm -hmm. If yeah. it's with the truth, it changes everything that I do. Mm -hmm. You know, so he 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 really focused on uh, the incompletion effects. Yes, yeah. I like that. Inco and and for someone like Dr. Avila who reads a lot and mm -hmm. is a psychologist, yes. Mm -hmm. For him to focus on the incompletion effects, mm -hmm. that tells me I need to move forward a lot more yes. with talks about the incompletion effects. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, that's a powerful terminology because people don't think about what you don't do affects people that you don't know. Right. You know, which can change their life, right? That's right. true. See, that's, you're, you're setting a chain, a reaction. You know, you remember the, the show Pass It Forward? The movie back mm -hmm. in the day, yeah. you know, you help someone to help someone else, right? You know, that's a it's a it's a chain. But you're saying if you don't pass it forward, you kind of screw up people down the line, right? So much. Right. Yeah. So it's always thinking positive, mm -hmm. thinking truth, mm -hmm. and being honest with yourself, and being proactive. Yes, because yeah. uh, not everyone can walk in a room authentically, but he can do it. Yeah. Other people will be quieter, maybe send an email or something, right? So or like, doubting themselves, like thinking, "What am mm -hmm. I doing here?" When he goes somewhere, yeah. I realize that you go in it for the purpose, for, with and intention. you execute the the mission, like a right. marine goes yeah, yeah, in yeah, there. Yeah, you know, right. he's he's like. Mm -hmm. uh, what they call those special services, right? The guys that go in, you special know, forces, special forces, right? You know, uh -huh. and, and accomplish the mission, right? No matter what. Mm -hmm. I never looked at it like that, Not but that—that's pretty much what you do. You, yeah. you're intact, mm -hmm. you're focused, and you're going in for the mission, yeah. and you make yeah. it. Happen. He's like an officer, right? Military mm -hmm. officer. Right? You gotta get, get mm -hmm. on your fatigues next time, right? Mm -hmm. Get ready. Right? So. Well, gentlemen, <laughs> thank you so much. Yeah, both. Thank you. I'll tell you what, why don't we invite him to one of our talks? I mean, one of our upcoming uh, presentations. Definitely, if you yeah. Come, you know, if you are around town. We're gonna we're gonna be mm -hmm. doing one a small one here in Orange County with another person. He's an entrepreneur. We had him. He's a rapper, a uh, white rapper that you would never think about. But he didn't let that stop him. Mm. He's also an entrepreneur. He's mm -hmm. been his first. He visualizes it as his first national chain mm -hmm. of nachos. Instead mm -hmm. of burgers, he wants to sell nachos, yeah. but with different topics, Mexican style. Yeah. He married. Uh, well, he was. With the Mexican girl. So uh -huh. he got all those influences there. And he invited us to his place in the Orange County area. Exactly. So let's go have a burger and some nachos. Definitely. It's going to probably be the third week of November. Definitely. We're setting it up. Exactly. And Danny, tell us what you're going to be up to and, you know, a little bit about your media and all that. What do you want people to know? Yeah. Well, well, where people can find me is at Andy Audate, A-N-D-Y-A-U-D-A-T-E, Andy Audate. And more information at andyaudate.com. Great. And I know you have a national seminar. Are you going to go to New York or something like that? You're putting yeah, some I'm, stuff I'm on? I'm working on some projects on for next year in different cities throughout the country. Mm -hmm. I'm headed to New York next week. But I'll be back in Los Angeles for my event uh, later on in 2018, June 2018. Well, we invite you back on those days so we can come back and refresh people on your, on your presence and invite them to be part of your event. How's that? Thank, thank you so much. much. Yeah. Thank you. And they can reach us at Love Type for you, number four letter U at AO.com and also guytypes.com. Uh, until next time, loving yourself, others, and a higher power. Thank you so yeah. much, brother. Wonderful pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Two, two handshakes. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> I was trying to hold my hand. <laughs> the chain of love. <laughs> thank you, guys. Right. I'm not Chingo. Find me there on Instagram. <laughs>